I recently learned that positive geometry is a new approach to physics that could unify everything from cosmology to particle physics. That reminded me of category theory, which was supposed to unify all of physics two decades ago, and whatever happened to that. Today we'll have a quick look at both of them. Physics and mathematics have historically gone hand in hand. Sometimes mathematicians have taken their inspiration from physics, such as Hermann Weyl, who invented gauge symmetries, and sometimes the other way around, such as physicists who used Young Mills theories in the development of the standard model. In this case, it's not even clear what came first. Positive geometry, which has been around for about a decade, is a two-way relationship that was born by physicists but latched onto some already existing ideas in mathematics. And mathematicians have now found an interest in it. I asked Chad GPT what positive geometry is, and it said, a positive geometry is a pair of a complex algebraic variety defined over the reals and a closed semi-algebraic region whose interior is an oriented D-manifold, which is as close to Chinese as I'll ever be able to pronounce. But when I looked into this a little closer, I realized it's not that complicated. We've actually talked about it before, because positive geometry is a generalization of the amplitudehedra. Those are the magical shapes of Nima Kani Hamet and his collaborators, which they say will one day replace space and time. It's the probably most ambitious research program in the foundations of physics today, and it just got even more ambitious. My dumb YouTuber version is that a positive geometry is a sort of polygon in higher dimensions. It's called positive because it always has a smile on its face. Just checking if you're listening. It's called positive because it's defined by an inequality that says something is larger or equal to zero. And on that polygon, one has a way to assign values to sides and edges. This sounds terribly abstract, and it is, but it's basically a way to describe how things can change. This is what these polyhedra and their edges and values describe. What can a physical system do? And physics is ultimately all about change. Positive geometries, therefore, can describe how particles interact, but also how the universe itself changes shape and maybe other things that we haven't yet figured out. This is why they might be able to unify quantum physics with gravity. In some recent publications now, researchers have worked out how to make contact between this positive geometry and the more standard physics. They've done this by deriving differential equations and correlation functions, still abstract, but now at least words that most physicists should be familiar with. I give this a 1 out of 10 on the bullshit meter because it's both new and likely mathematically correct. It's not a zero because they haven't made any predictions and I'm not so sure about the relation of this idea to reality. I'm wary because we've seen highly abstract maths ideas and physics come and go before. One of those was category theory. Category theory, let me just read this from Wikipedia, is a general theory of mathematical structures and their relations. But all theories in physics are mathematical structures with their relations, so category theory can describe all of them. To give you a typical example, working with category theory looks something like this. It's diagrams that tell you how things are related to other things. There's little that isn't category theory. Your ancestry, market economies, chemistry, it's all things related to other things. It's like inventing a new language in which the only word is things. When I just finished my PhD, there was a blip of interest in category theory among physicists. Some books were written and conferences held, but that never went anywhere. It's still used in some of the more mathematically heavy research, and I don't deny its usefulness, but I don't think anyone today believes it'll revolutionize physics. The issue with category theory is that if you generalize mathematics enough, you eventually get a theory of anything, not a theory of everything. And I worry that positive geometry will turn out the same and just produce a highly mathematical construct of whatever without solving any problems. 
there is a bigger philosophical question behind ideas like this, which is how much pure mathematics can help physicists. Some people, for example, David Lindley in his book, The End of Physics, have argued that indeed the stagnation in the foundations of physics is due to its over-reliance on mathematics to the detriment of experiment and understanding. I don't agree with that. I think of maths as a powerful tool, but like any tool, its use depends on how well you know how to handle it. And to paraphrase the common saying, if you have a positive geometry, everything looks like a polygon. How does that work? Why is that so? If those are questions you also like to ask, you should really have a look at Brilliant. It's a great way to practice your problem-solving skills and your critical thinking. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. I found it to be a highly effective way to build up knowledge. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free and if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.